He told me about it. I'm just going to record because I I, okay. I figure these conversations are historical. At some point, this game of planets will be the game of planets. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, no, no, I think he messaged me about it as Trek Wars, and I couldn't open it on my phone at that point, and I was always playing the stupid phone games. So. That's, uh... Oh, yeah. Did you know it used to be called trekwars.net? Yeah, it was, it was trekwars.net for a while when I first made it because I couldn't think of a good name and I thought some kind of combination between Star Wars and Star Trek was smart. So I called it Trek Wars. <laughs> yeah. But well, I remember thinking, well, just the first time I played and the first time you sent it to me, that you know, just trying to remember the haze of kind of, hey, what is this? And then I got to the, a certain point and then I stopped and that was, and then I and then it was only when you later brought me in to the second game, I think, that you showed me how it worked. And then I went, oh, okay, that's how it goes. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, if I even if I got paid five dollars an hour, I could sit down and make the stupid strategy guide, which is like going to be a hundred pages now. <laughs> I just, I haven't had the time to put into that, but it's going to yeah. be a big one. So and, let, yeah, me, the, let me just ask: off. if if I go get some funding. And paid you whatever you wanted. Would you stop going to school? No, no, no. I'm going to do this degree. You're still going to school, but you could still. Well, you know what? Okay, for sure, I would finish the first year because I'm currently like halfway through the first year. It'd be crazy not to finish that. And then. But I what happens if the game, game had like a hundred thousand sure. subscribers? Yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. If uh, yeah, I mean if somehow we got some funding and. The game got really popular, and I wouldn't have I'm, to. I'm just saying that you're going. I'm still to, finished this year. You're going to school to make you to learn game mechanics, is what I understand, right? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm doing software engineering with a major in game programming. But you've already made a masterpiece game that hasn't even been tested yet to the degree which it could in the sense of going like what i'm telling you is you already made the game like now you're going to start right. to figure out how to make it but you did it and this thing is wow. great I, i'm also going to school so that i can qualify for a decent paying job if, if this game or anything else i do doesn't actually make me money <laughs> which is currently the, the situation God, so just in case i thought hey might as well get you know, a degree in something so i can get a decent job Mark, but anyway, how yeah. is this game? Well, it's pretty good, yeah. I, I don't I don't know if I want to encourage Noah to, to ditch his education. Pursuit. Yeah, at this point, a... even if he got us a million dollars and, and we started, you know, really like this became my job and stuff, I would still finish this first year of school. I have to say that. It, okay. I would still finish this first year, get my whatever certificate or whatever so that I could continue on later if I wanted no, I'm on video camera right now. Yeah. Hang on, my son keeps trying to join the Discord for the game. And oh. Uh, it. Can you just send me the invite and then I'll message it to him too? And then... Yeah, you should be able to get inside the game now. Uh, if you just click on the game settings menu, there's a, actually a, a button right there you can click. You said it didn't work or something. You tried in the game to get the Discord? And it said invalid invite. It said invalid invite. Oh, <laughs> okay. I will do that right now. Hold on. That's weird. Uh, maybe it, I wonder if they expire or something. Oh, your invite link expires in seven days. Oh my god! I better update that every week. That sucks. <laughs> All right, I will. I'm messaging you in Discord right now with the new one there. Okay, I'm sending you another invite. No, I'll update that right now. It's really annoying. Didn't realize that happens. So is the what kind of time time duration do you see on this game? Uh what do you mean time duration? Like, like kind of is there an end like I guess, do, do these games come to an end? 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, as far as I know, no, not exactly. Is we never first, finished the game. Is the first game still going? Technically, it is. Is anyone yeah, in Mark, there? Is anyone Mark still playing the game? No, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I guess I still survive, perhaps. I haven't, I don't know if I've actually let it collapse, but close. So I haven't if logged in still for a long seen, time. If you're still seeing the choice where you have to pick alpha game or beta game, then it means you're still alive in the beta game. Then, or the. So I'm still alive in it. Yeah. In the last one, there's no one else left alive in it. But yeah, there definitely needs to be a clear path to some sort of victory and a respawn sort of mechanism in order to complete the real yeah. gameplay cycle. And I've been thinking, you know, I have ideas that I've been thinking about too to help with that. Um, but it would it would require, I think, you know, the problem is if someone loses out in the game, it's they're going to want to start again. So you're going to have to have like cycling games or something like that, you know? Well, that was the idea of opening like Charlie game and Delta game and so on, because my original thought was like, yeah, I would just it'll have it automatically do that every two weeks or every month or something. Just open a new server every month just because anyone who joins new anyway is going to be too far behind. Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? Like, a new, like just that they would be able to join the next server kind of thing? Yeah, pretty much. I think, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, that's almost if they it's want basically to, if, there. It's just not automated probably give them a choice if they were losing and they want to just sort of exile themselves and take the same empire into a new game not to keep anything but the same race and the same options you know oh they yeah want, they don't have to like, give it a, yeah if they thought they just had a bad run but they wanted to try this empire they tried again and keep the same name and everything even and just say and have like a little That's port fair. your empire into the next game yeah you could I, okay yeah uh, could even just have like a restart game button or something even yeah, they wouldn't really know Except what it is. Make up some sort of story about exiling your empire to a new galaxy, or, or even just like pretend you were all in a simulation and like you know, now you've learned your lesson. Time for the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So okay, I guess yeah. One thing would be they can they can join a new server, quit the old one, and then. Yeah. Yeah, but like, yeah, I guess if we could figure out some way that we could end the game cycle or some way that is... Yeah, but then also, yeah, not just a victory. But victory, yeah. And I've thought about either there's like, you know, the unified technology that everyone has to work towards or, yeah, like colonizing a certain percentage of the galaxy or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I guess a lot of those, a lot of strategy games, they have like some kind of metric where if you control this much of the map where you have you know this much more forces than everyone else you just it's just you basically just won i could set that up for sure so like if jibetas or one of us or something became you know so powerful that it's literally you know be, becoming impossible to ever win it should time out and say hey you know this person won because he's he's just so powerful well i think yeah the win conditions would be set up at the beginning mm -hmm. and some might be a if we're going to have a three-month game some might be when you reach thousand ships some might be when you've got 50 colonies all with the space warp or like i think if you set up the game with the parameters of what the victory conditions are then that changes the nature of the game and i i've said this before where i, I think people should come in as teams and then they're thrown in the galaxy and there should be a story and then you got to find your friends and then you create your alliance and then you try to take over the galaxy but then you actually might cooperation might actually work better than actually trying to kill everybody which is essentially what mm -hmm. it is like right now right I, I like that but also what about people who don't have three other friends who want to play the game with them then they can be formed as a team like at the beginning you you have three people you're looking for that are part of your pod you got separated at birth and you're, you know, it's, it's a story. And so you're, you're like this prince, you got floated down the river, you wake up and you're in this colony and all of a sudden you're the king of the empire. And now your goal is you have to find your three brothers or sisters and you have to win this galaxy. I think, I think for me, like I want to play with my friends, like every game I played online, I don't know anyone and there's thousands of people in there. And this game is so like what was nice about this is we started at the beginning so you don't come in you know a thousand years behind everybody and if i had if i like 
brought three of my buddies in and said, okay, we're going to play this game. Then I've got something I, I can play with them. I want to play with my friends. I want to hang out with still, them. Yeah, I mean, you can still play with them. You don't have to have the team kind of thing set up right away. Because, like, for instance, me and Mark are on the same team, basically. But we didn't. the game isn't structured that way. Like, we're all on the same team now. No, but the, the only reason we're, like, if I didn't know you at all, we would have mm. had a very different interaction, right? I wanted to be your ally. I felt like no matter what, okay, I might, me and him are together. But right. if I came in solo, you know, it's it's a tough galaxy out there, man. Mm. But I, I think the essence of <laughs> online gaming is playing with your friends. You know, people, you know, people want to play with their, their crew. And so you set it up from the get-go that you come in with the crew, but now you're separated. And so part of it is finding yourselves. So that's the beginning. You got to find yourself because it could take a couple of months to find where some of these people, and then you all of a sudden, here's this whole galaxy. Okay, you're here, I'm here, you're here. And there's, let's say, and you have, let's say a hundred people come into the game. That's it, that's the limit. And now you got 25 teams vying to control the galaxy. And at some point along the way, you realize you have to cooperate. Like all of a sudden it, 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 it becomes binary. Like, the, like it's like what's happening now. Like there's us and it's them and that's it. Like, and, and then at some mm-hmm. point you either have the big battle and win or you unify and everyone's at peace and then you, you start a new game kind of thing. But I think we need to tr- treat, like it's like an evolutionary thing. Like you start at war, but at the end, the end game is actually peace. Because at some point, I don't want to fucking go blow hot dog and jabats and shit. I just want to deal with my own fucking empire. But I don't want to be fucking attacked anymore. So how do yeah. I deal with it? I got to get my buddies here to go blow the fuck out of hot dog. Yeah, it's strangely real in all these aspects. And I've also been trying to think of other game mechan- mechanics that, you know, can be strived towards that isn't just uh, blowing other people up, right? Like, um, Yeah. Scientific ventures or uh, other such things. So, like the yeah, that's really tech- something we can offer. Because yeah, like currently, say like um, Cap Capria or whatever, and Conscious Collective, and I think someone else too. They really just never want to fight ever. They just build and you know build things and colonize and research things and like that. They just never want to fight in the whole game. Yeah, which is not is okay but i mean now they're going to attack they're going to have to do something but i think it's just interesting because normally a a strategy game like a war-based strategy game those people are not going to play ever yeah they're just like i don't want to play that game but strangely we're we're able to like hold their attention with this one because you can sort of never fight to a point so yeah if we can keep that going somehow or build in more mechanics that yeah don't involve you know combat then i think and I think There's combat's like, good too. I mean, I didn't even come into this game hoping to fight. I mean, I just got attacked outright and I just had fight for my life from the start. So yeah. I mean, not everyone had that choice. But <laughs> um, true. <laughs> yeah, I prefer uh, to just kind of build and research and like progress. Strangely, yeah. that's all I really want to do anyway. I think that, you know, if there was certain clear competition points like special systems that people could fight over and if you didn't want to fight over it we just sit back you know and do your own thing sort of sort of deal so Mm -hmm. i think if you set the science ships out and then you find the arkenstone or you find like there's artifacts maybe there's 12 artifacts spread randomly through the universe and you're looking for these artifacts and you put the artifacts together create the first gate like there needs to be like the story aspect that's the big missing piece I find. That yeah, there, there needs to be meaning oh. to getting things. It's and I think that there could be competing huh? victory. <laughs> there could be what competing. He said he's game of stories. <laughs> the story just I tells just itself as you play. Yeah, um, like civilization. I don't know. That doesn't have a story. Really. It had a well, bit of a one. Like he's saying, like you're the king of this village. There's the world, and that's pretty much the story, right? Well, maybe at the beginning, you could have the portal question is, do you want to enter a story or there's no story? That's that, like, you need to have parameters, the type of game that you're going to enter into. And there's so many different kind of ways, but what you have is a, is a beautiful foundation. And then from there, 
you make the choices about what kind of game you want to play and that's how you, the game gets modified right yeah hmm I guess, I mean, one thing about the teams of four idea you had, it's interesting because the, the way I set it up this time, the, this time around for us to play is like, you can pick one of these 20 races or you can make your own, but essentially you can pick one of these 20 races. So like, for example, it could be if we did do a teams of four thing next time around, it could be just like, hey, you know, you can pick one of these 20 species. And if there's not four people in that species, you can still select it. If there's four people already selected, you can't select that species anymore. And whatever species you pick puts you on that team, basically. And, you know, so. Oh, yeah. And you could just do a private team. You could yeah. just like, you could have a code to get into the team. So your friends could all join on the same team. Yeah. Yeah. There'd be some, there'd definitely have to be somewhere to do that because otherwise it'd be lame. You know, you all want to play the game and oh, I can't be on the same team. But that would kind of make sense story wise or whatever else, I think, as well, because you actually are all the same species. And perhaps you're yeah, the four of you are scattered around the galaxy, but you're all the Lucronians or whatever it is. I think that would work. <clears throat> yeah, there could be some sort of underlying story, like why are there all these races, you know, coming to power at the same time? Is there some secret in the galaxy to be found, sure. some predecessors? There's artifacts to be found and systems to be of interest to held to be held to unlock the the final you know evolution of species you know like our final research of species evolution or something like that. So maybe we're eventually going to get to the point where you're done colonizing all these planets and it'll be kind of the end game, right? You're going to evolve your species past the need to colonize, i.e., win. You know, so hmm. through one of these finding of artifacts or through pure research i don't know if you have competing um competing victories that cause tension like oh no he's got so much research points you know he's getting you know there would be like these messages broadcast in messages like you know he's 75 percent of the way to researching the universal secret and winning the game and you're like oh shit i gotta wreck up his research capabilities so that i extend the game longer so that i can win by holding these systems or whatever you know so hmm having having a couple of ways to win the game might be interesting and in, in yeah i think much. yeah having more than one way to win is good if it's if you can if you can engineer it right like because i think yeah one way has to be the military way where yeah if you if you know you got ten thousand ships and everyone else has like 200 you should just win because no one's going to want to play anymore if you think you know yeah some sort of military victory anyway or or you control you know, Maybe if you have like 80% of the ships in the galaxy, like a, a certain percentage yeah, of the ships uh, is in your alliance. Yeah, or a certain percentage of the colonies. Like if you have 250 colonies and there's eight other players who have 12 or 15 each, that doesn't make sense either. When you yeah. think about it, you know, you could just give the game mechanism to somebody to like force them to seed their empire because, you know, when, when faced with somebody who controls the empire and you've got a little empire left fighting for its life and when you're like, okay, when am I going to finally admit defeat? Is it going to be chosen for me or will I just also, I think it could be both ways, you know, like you could decide for them, but eventually there's also, people will probably seed once it's ridiculously out. Unless they're all like me. I mean, I keep, keep on. Yeah, I guess like that, that one guy he wanted to like quit the game, but he didn't know how to really do it. He's like, I, I'm just going to give all my resources to other people and, and then not log in anymore. But <laughs> that's kind of lame for everyone else because now there's that better burst. Uh, I don't know if it's still there, but that better birth kingdom where it's just the guy just left and, and now yeah. he's just floating around there and slowly degrading. But yeah, there should be a way to surrender, maybe. Or, or give everything guess, you have to somebody. I guess, yeah, you should be either be able to like surrender to your enemy or like uh, something think, else to you. I kind of think that should be one way to end war, too. Like, you know, seed territories or seed colonies in order to gain peace with your enemy but i don't know how it would be it can't be yeah, enforced I, and i guess that's sort of real world stuff too so i definitely have to build that in so that you can say you know give me a ceasefire if i give you such and such a system and then that ceasefire has to hold for so many days or something too like or maybe not maybe they just you know they just say okay sure and then declare war on you right away 
I don't know. I have to work that out. Like what we would want to do there, but something like that, where like, yeah, I'll you know, I'll yeah. give you the P3 for for this, or you know, it would have to be some sort of you know pure game control, like points wise, you know, That's, you know. like I discussed before, if you have sort of the points to motivate people to do things, you know, like points for getting to 10 colonies or points for getting 10 ships, 100 ships, 200 ships. Um, do you remember that conversation? Yeah, I still don't really, or... I can't wrap my head around it entirely, like, so that you'd have, like, oh. a certain amount of victory points in your, in your well, overall just, empire or something? Most of it is to get people going at their early start, you know, like, they're like, okay, so I got this colony. Well, what, what do I do? What's the point of doing anything? But if you got like, you know, I'll give you a point if you build a ship. And like, okay, then I'll build a ship. Uh, like, good. Like, you, you, first so like accomplishment. A achievement. Yeah, achievements. Like, yeah. yeah. Achievement. Now build five ships. And they go, oh, all right, I'll build five ships. And then right. you, know, you just lure people into just doing more just by giving these little points that amount to nothing. They don't have to amount to anything more than stickers, really. But it gives them a sort of guide as well as to what they should be doing to keep getting stronger and bigger with their empires. Like, oh, more ships. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, more construction. So, okay, sure. And then, oh, more colonies. I should build more colonies. Yeah. Oh, okay. The achievement says 10 colonies. Oh, man, I only got three colonies. Okay, so I'll, maybe I should keep going. And like, oh, right. man, achievement for, for reaching 10,000 research points. I didn't even know that was possible. I've only got 200 research points. So. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I like that. Hmm. Yep. And at the end of the game, I guess, you know, your achievement points will be plastered on the scoreboard and it'll be like. Yeah, there would have to be some sort of leaderboard or something, at least after the game, so that people who played a whole game and actually completed one somehow, that everyone everyone's scores would be recorded there and I guess, like your player, your player account or whatever would have it there, and all the different games you played or something. Something like that, I guess. I think if you had it as the parameters again at the beginning of the game, and one would have, let's say, leaderboard stuff, and one wouldn't, and the leader, like the beauty of what you have is so much is mystery, right? A lot of these games I've gone into, they, they've got everything down pat, right, from the get go. And for you, for, for your game, there's, there's a, it's a, it's more like reality, but the game is like, no, well, just like, like a leaderboard, like, let's say a game that can actually coincide with reality creates that game space, right? Where the person's really into it. And so it depends on how gamified it is versus reality it is in order to kind of get into it. Right. Like to me, I imagine. If I'm an Empire commander, I'm about to destroy a plan. I just killed 9 billion people. How do you feel about that one? You know, like, that's that's a pretty big bomb I just dropped. And and then I'm thinking, would I do that? Like, do I have a moral choice? I don't want to fucking go blow up 9 billion. You know, why, why don't I use my ethics in my real life in this game? Like, that to me is the teaching ground. Like, this game is a teaching ground for ethics and for communication. Maybe, but then I'm like, what am I doing colonizing all these planets and then in native species? This is awful of me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, yeah, I know, though. Uh, yeah, that's kind of borderline. But I, I mean, that's why I call it indigenous growth projects. Cause it's yeah. like, but I mean, it has the same connotation. Like, well, let's come in and teach them how to live, you know? They can help us build some stuff. and. <laughs> Yeah, who am I to be going across the galaxy anyways and seeding my progeny across all these native worlds that might have developed their own unique and alien, you know, fanciful alien life, you know, like, why am I, there's some sort of eugenics to thinking that I deserve to be spread across the entirety of the galaxy, so. Yeah, and like a week oh, I two take, or something, if I just wanted to, need to make it so, I could, so you could bomb native species. So I have to put aside my <laughs> ethics right, aside right off the bat when I play this game because I don't think I should ever be going to another planet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's well, a point. Yeah. There's a point to all that. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's the war side of it, right? Like same same with like uh, 
Warcraft 2 or any of those older games like Age of Empires or anything, it's like, you know, it's all about like fighting and killing and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, I that I've lost billions and billions. There's uh, no evil I won't commit against uh, my enemies. So. If you look at this as a yeah. teaching tool to teach humans how to go into space. I can't. No, no, that's, that's not what I made it for. It's a horrible example. <laughs> this is, I literally just made this game as like a copycat of like Master of Orion and Civilization and stuff where it's like, you can go conquer the galaxy and fight about it. And I just wanted to make a game that could, could be marketable and could be relatable already to like what other games are. But it's not a, it's not supposed to be an example of like morality or anything like that <laughs> or ethics or whatever. No, but no, but you see what I said though. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, frame like look at what the human species is at. Like the one of the biggest things that we are going to do is go into space, right? Like it, we, as soon as we make contact, I mean, I'm sure we made contact already. But I'm just saying, like our species is at the point of unified communication field. Like the things that you have as technologies in your game are occurring, and now. Oh. It's like yeah, I tried to pick yeah you know, real stuff and put it in the game that way. So, so to me, it's it's like you are, whether you wanted to or not. I'm just telling you what you got here. Is that I would frame it as a training tool to teach people how to think in terms of humans going into space. Well, yeah. Oh boy, I'm just, I'll leave <laughs> so you with that for a minute. How, right how many humans think okay. at the planetary level, like other than gamers, right? Like how many people actually think, okay, I'm in charge of the planet and this is how we should go. Like it teaches a level of thinking about you're in charge of your planet and you're going out. So it's, it's, it's a totally different level of thinking. You're teaching economics, you're teaching governance, you're teaching all the parts of the inflow that are part of society you have in your game. I guess to an extent, but I mean, all the stuff, I didn't invent all this stuff, like this, these types of uh like the civic screen all this stuff i kind of stole from other games anyway it doesn't matter i'm just telling you what it is and i'm just saying that you may not have thought of that or you didn't want that but i'm just saying from my point of view if i was going to get a bunch of kids huh? and i wanted to teach them okay we're about to go into space as a species and i want you guys to think the planet planetary level because i think every human has to think it at the planetary level right now in order to do the reorganization of our species. We have to change how we're gonna think. And the, the way we do it is happening within the gaming world. Like the kids are getting formatted by the games they play. That's, that's it. And All so right. we, we need to create a game and this is like the beginning of it. Like when I said the molding and you, I, I know you have a little resistance in terms of in integration, but it, I'm just thinking in terms of my own, what I wanna build, what I see that you have, the merger of the two and you know the essence that we need to help people with is learning how to communicate how do i make an ally how do i make a defense pact how do i how do i meet someone across the street who's another species so it's freaking i think it's amazing that this tool could be used by like every high school kid in the world i think it's pretty cool too I think also um, your inflow matrix is better um, than this. And a game that we could make that combined that and what I'm doing could be better than this game also, much better. Uh, but I think I think this, the, like this, two things. One, this game is pretty much done. It just needs a few fixes. Uh, and two, it takes a lot of work to, to modify this game because it's so big and there's so much stuff going on. It's actually faster for me to build an entirely new game at this point. Um, really? Oh yeah, yeah. That's why, because like even the speed updates, I, I I make a speed update and then the ships start stop working properly and stuff. It's like everything's connected and there's, you know, something like eighty thousand lines of code now. Um, it's it's much easier for me. And be, plus, when I started this game, I didn't really know how to make a game, and I didn't. I never really tried to take on a project this big or complicated. And, and I learned a lot of programming on the, along the way. Now, if I start a new game, I'm already starting at that level. You know, uh, I, I can much easier design it 
to like, okay, how are all the mechanics fit together to start? What are all the screens going to be? What is the point of the game? How, how do we make the graphics? All of that, I already figured out how to do all that. If I was to make a game like this again, it'd be, you know, much, much easier. Mm. But I, but anyway, the third thing, I guess, uh, is that this game is, yeah, pretty much done. It's, you know, I can keep keep working on it, keep adding stuff. But I think after the invasion and the in, in interception is added, and some some few t- few tweaks are added, like like ships running away, and you know a different kind of a different some some you know minor things here and there. I think it's pretty much done, and I, so I see this game as yeah maybe we could you know as a team here do something with it, like get get a bit of funding, try to get some advertising out there, whatever it takes to get you know ten thousand people say t- I mean well, ten thousand people spend you know five bucks a month. Though. That's fifty thousand a month. That's enough to pay us you know. And then we can, and we can use the income from this game to like do some of the projects we really want to do. Not, not try to make this game what we really want to do. Just use it, make some money with it, and then, and then do something else. That would be my goal. I just want to put forward another idea as a possibility. Because I, I find your resistance, every time I'm looking at integration, you're always saying no. And I just, I just want you to entertain an idea that your game is a foundation that like, let's say you look at, okay, here's the battle. That whole battle, you, you know, whatever happens in space combat is a whole other world that if you got a team of programmers and, and uh, designers and artists and get and had, you know, yeah. 200,000 bucks and said, create the battle <laughs> part. Yeah. That's an upgrade to your game that if that is added, I'm just saying that you, I don't know, because you're the game designer and you, you create a baby and you go, this is the baby. That's what it is. Okay. On to the next baby. And I'm going, the baby's going to grow and the baby's going to get bigger. And it's going to be very, you know, there's so much you could do with that baby. You can, it's going to keep mm-hmm. growing. And all of a sudden, guess what? It isn't what you thought it was. It's to the Minecraft thing, right? That's what happened to Minecraft. It was just yeah. a little one day, but this is what it was going to be. And then it didn't, it didn't die on its own. So. Yeah, I mean. So, are you kind of seeing like if what you really want to do would be a version two of this sort of F endeavor, or would it be something entirely different? Oh, well, I'd like to make games and and also potentially like yeah, communication applications and things that aren't games. But um, there's a different game that I'd like to make. Yeah, basically like Civilization Online, like some sort of version of like where it's you're not spaceships, but there's like you know. Something like the Civilization game, I think, would be pretty cool. And the, I don't know, some other stuff. I, uh, what am I saying? I, I, I think, I guess, what, what part of me thinks that okay, this game's good enough right now to, to try to get some funding for it and finish. And finishing it could involve, yeah, uh, making the graphics part of it for battles, basically copying the game and making it as a, you know, a, a installable game on your computer rather than a web web browser based game because that's kind of limiting the market and making things hackable and stuff like that probably in the end too if if, a, if this thing got popular. But if yeah, and then because if you can make it into a, like a platform game where it's a PC or Mac game or whatever, or I guess PC Mac and Linux game, then you could release it on Steam for ten dollars, for instance. People, you know, ten thousand people buy it for ten bucks. There's one hundred thousand dollars. You know, ten thousand people is not that much. But it's enough that again the game is going to be pretty crazy and hundred thousand bucks they'll buy a server and, and whatever else and, and you know kickstart the whole right so or continue to kickstart the business because already yeah. you know you need at least one and goal post here right you need to hit at least one finish marker and get somewhere with it instead of moving it to some grand goal post even if it does end up yeah. being there you need that first one at the very the very least, but Elias yeah. just trying to look past it already. I can see what's. I think, know, yeah, that's right. Even if we, he needs to have that first goal post. Even if it does go beyond that, he needs to know we have reached something that's nearby enough. You know, like to hit. Yeah, at this point, it's got to be. It's got to start bringing in something soon because, you know, to 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 be able to get ten thousand people to play, it absolutely needs a better server. I can't afford a better server. You know. Um, yeah. I'm actually paying three hundred dollars a month for this server, and it's making me zero dollars a month. What oh, I really no. want this game to work. 
Hey guys, you know, this but... one's about to end, and I'm I got to go into another call. Oh, okay. Um, great to meet you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Great to see you again, Noah. And um, you know where I'm at. Okay. Well, I feel like we could probably have another discussion about this. Uh, are Are you interested in that? Yeah, of course. Where? Yeah. Like when? Sure. Yeah. I mean, this time of day is like. The two hours previous to this, I'm usually pretty free. The two hours previous to this? Yeah. Uh, on weekdays, I'm usually free. Just, you know, for reaching out and stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay. We'll figure it out. But yeah, I think, I don't know. Yeah. I think we could finish this discussion sometime because, or continue it, whatever. Feel like we open up a big box of worms that needs to be put to work, something well, like that. I mean, I could delay this call um, if if we need to go deeper right now. Depends. No. On, are we talking strategy about how to deal with Jabba the Hut? Are we dealing with starting a gaming no. company or uh, integrating the <laughs> inflow matrix with uh, everything you're talking about? Uh, I guess. Okay, we have a minute left. Uh, I'm thinking like. Um, I, I'm okay. I'm thinking like you and and me and you, uh, as in all three of us, have like some some skills and some some amount of free time that we're currently spending on this game anyway. Um, I guess yeah. I'm wondering, do the three of us have the skills to get some, get some funding? Uh, B, are we at the point where we can get some funding, or you know, or it needs to have a little bit more finished? see like is, is one of us able to make a decent business plan presentation and stuff like it's probably gonna be me <laughs> i don't know what do i have to do to move this forward is what i'm thinking i, I know we're gonna run out of time any second now but that's just kind of what i was thinking concluding well i'm i'm seriously interested in looking at this as, as a, a product within the shared knowledge community i think it's a, a winner i would like to go get funding and